For decades there has been a handbag that has been coveted by women all over the world. And even some men carry one as well. You have seen many celebrities with one draped over their arms. It comes in many colors, sizes and skins and goes by the name Birkin. Its manufacturer is Hermes. Hermes makes lots of other things. They started as a harness shop in 1837 making leather riding gear for European noblemen. They advanced to accessories and clothing in the 1920s when a golf jacket was made for the Prince of Wales. The first infamous handbag Hermes created was named after Grace Kelly in the 1930s and called the Kelly Bag. This story is particularly about a man who found his route to riches by circumventing the notorious waitlist Hermes had for their most famous bag. Not the Kelly Bag but the newer Birkin. First, how did the most coveted bag in the world come to be? In 1981, British actress, singer and it girl at the time, Jane Birkin, was on a flight from Paris to London. She found herself seated next to the chief executive of Hermès, Jean-Louise Dumas. The contents of Jane Birkin's bag, including her Hermès diary, spilled onto the floor. Dumas helped her gather her things, noting that she could use a bag with pockets. The actress replied that the day Hermès made a large everyday bag she would give up her signature oversized basket bag. She complained how hard it was to find a spacious, secure, and stylish bag she liked. Dumas immediately pulled out a pencil and an airplane sick bag, and the two collaborated on a sketch for the now iconic Birkin bag, which Hermès debuted in 1984. Its roomy interior made it an ideal jet-set option, and the lock meant it could be securely carried and stay closed during travel. Jane was gifted a 40 cm Birkin. At the time the bag retailed for $2,000. In 2011, Jane Birkin sold her original, well-worn bag at auction for more than $162,000 to support earthquake relief efforts in Japan. It took a while for the bag to catch on in popularity. In the 90s it had some allure. But it was the early 2000s that the popular show Sex in the City catapulted it to fame. When Samantha's quest to get one highlighted how elusive it was. Although Hermes makes other bags, it's the Birkin that almost always appreciates in value. Vogue reports that demand for Hermes bags overall has increased by 430% since March 2020. Christie's has conducted auctions where Birkin bags have sold for north of $200,000. Part of the reason for the strong demand is Hermes's uncompromising dedication to quality. And the fact that you can hardly get one because they are produced in such limited quantity. A single bag can take anywhere from 20 to 48 hours of work by a one craftsman, done only by hand. Hermes trains craftsmen for a minimum of five years before they can even start to craft a handbag. Hermes is infamously known to burn imperfect Birkins. Any other Jane trying to get a Birkin by simply walking in a store would be told none is available and they have to go on a wait list which can take years. Meet the man who accidentally discovered how to get around the wait list. Michael Tonello describes the aura of the bag like this, most people have never seen the bags in person. It's this magical, unobtainable piece of luxury that women dream of owning. When I bring a Birkin to an event, women go crazy over it. It gets more attention than a newborn. Around 2000, Michael moved to Barcelona from Provincetown, Massachusetts, with the promise of a job. At the time he was a beautician and makeup artist who specialized in commercial photography. Within days of signing his apartment lease in Barcelona his new job fell through. He decided to list some items on eBay. He took one of his scarves, purchased years earlier for $99 at a Ralph Lauren outlet, and sold it on eBay for $430. Ecstatic, he looked around for what else he might sell. He sold a Truman Capote first edition book for $1,000. He saw an eBay board for Hermes scarves, it had lots of activity. He had Hermes scarves. He sold one and got a $400 profit. What happened next put him on the road to the magical journey he was about to embark on, people who didn't get to buy his scarf, wrote to ask him if he had more. He saw opportunity. Michael traveled to the Hermes store in Barcelona, where he bought two dozen scarves and sold them for a sizable profit. He discovered that these scarves cost $30 less at the Hermes store in Andorra, so he made the two-hour drive and bought the first of a thousand scarves he would purchase there. Soon he was selling 30 scarves a week. All because he saw an insatiable appetite in the market. And, because Hermes didn't yet have a website. 
He was soon shipping over $25,000 in Iramess merchandise a month. The first time he heard of a Birkin, it was from one of his scarf buyers. Michael had no idea what she was talking about so he asked a friend. Once he looked online to do some research himself, he saw auctions and price points that made his eyes pop. Securing a Birkin was now at the top of his priority list. He called all the Hermes stores in driving distance, but was told there were none in stock. One day he was on a scarf buying mission in Madrid, as he still had orders to fill. Here, he accidentally discovered the winning formula. He had piled up 10 or so scarves as he usually did. This time, he casually asked, almost as an afterthought, oh, and one more thing, do you have a Birkin? To his surprise the saleswoman went to the back and returned with a huge orange box. The $18,000 bag netted him a $5,000 profit. This now became his sole mission. He could not wait to repeat the formula in another location. He had to make sure this wasn't an isolated incident. He went to Hermes in Paris to test his formula. He again bought a bunch of scarves. In fact, the exact same scarves he had bought in Madrid, just in case one of those scarves was the secret handshake in the equation. Again, when he asked to see a Birkin bag, they brought one out and he was able to buy it. He felt, as he walked out the door, that he was the Houdini of Hermes. Michael spent over $1.6 million a year on handbags. In 2005 he managed to buy 130 Birkins in a three-month period from September to Christmas, Crocodile being his best seller. His markup was about 30 to 50 percent, so a $9,000 purse would sell for $12,000 or $13,500. During his globetrotting endeavors he traveled to 111 RMS stores. His week would start like this. Monday morning he would wake up in Barcelona, where he lived, head to the airport for a flight to Zurich. As soon as he landed he would head to the Hermes store, buy a Birkin. Take a train or rent a car for a trip to the next city to buy another Birkin. Check into a five-star hotel, because he needed the security. At the price of a car, these Birkins start at $9,000, not this car but you get the point. If he had a crocodile one it could be well worth $34,000 so he needed the security of a top hotel to feel safe. One man can only cover so much ground. Eventually, he trained some friends of his to shop for Birkins to help with inventory for his growing client list. Word spread fast, he was the one to get you a Birkin, no wait. This worked beautifully for five years, like clockwork, until it didn't. Michael kept meticulous notes and had a rule of not returning to the same store for at least six months but still he slipped up. In the store in Paris he went in one time too many, they checked the computer and discovered how many bags he had bought. They sent him a fax saying essentially they would no longer sell him any bags. He had been globally blacklisted from buying any bags in any RMS store. Tonello cannot, under any circumstances, return to the business of reselling Birkins or even get one for himself. Hermes made this very clear. When asked by a client, via email, if he could get her a white Birkin or a Kelly bag, he went to try to use his old trusted formula. This was after news of his book first appeared. He picked up a few beach towels, and then asked about a white Kelly bag that was on display. The salesman said, I'm sorry, Mr. Tonello, that bag is reserved. In fact, every bag in the store is reserved. Michael knew on some level that once he released his memoir, his Birkin buying days would come to an end. The book was a bestseller, he became famous, once again traveling the world to many interviews, book signings and making deals for a movie and even more books. You should know that there is a thriving secondary market, but be careful as there are many fakes on the market. Buying a Birkin is not something to be rushed. To the untrained eye, you would not know if you were buying a fake. But there are several ways to spot a fake. How to authenticate a Birkin is your first step, not actually buying one. If you want to buy the book, Bringing Home the Birkin, where Michael tells of his globetrotting tales in hilarious detail you can click the link below. One last tip, another way to get around the wait list is to use the American Express Platinum Concierge. One Amex holder said she called and told them what she wanted and they put her on hold, called a few stores and within an hour each of three times she was in the store picking up the bag. Next you might like this fashion brand, a woman who created a billion dollar company from pantyhose or the mindset mentor that attracts money.